Today we are talking about deductive reasoning. Okay, last week we talked a little bit about inductive reasoning. And I used the example of my kids when I had my first two kids that I had them both at the same hospital on the same day. And for dinner I had the same nasty chicken sandwich, right? So I made a conjecture that on Thursdays at this hospital for dinner they had nasty chicken sandwiches. That is inductive reasoning. Okay, it's based on pattern. Today we're talking about deductive reasoning. And deductive reasoning uses facts, rules, uh, definition, property to reach logical conclusion. And so there's two different types that we're going to talk about. But before we do, I want to see, in looking at these two examples, if you can determine which one's which. So we'll look at the first one. We're going to determine if it's inductive or deductive. Every time Katie has worn her favorite socks to a softball game, she has socked at least one kid. Katie is wearing her favorite socks to the game tonight. So she concludes that she will get at least one hit. Would that be inductive or deductive reasoning? Inductive, because it's not a fact. Yeah, it's not a fact. So it's inductive reasoning. Okay, here's another one. If John is late making his car payment, he will be assessed a late fee of $50. John's payment is late this month, so he concludes that he will be assessed a late fee of $50. So that would be deductive, okay? Because there's a rule that says that if you're late, then you get charged a late fee. He is late, so he is charged a late fee. Okay, that's deductive. Now, like I said a while ago, there's two types of deductive reasoning. There's the law of detachment and there's the law of syllogism. Okay, and the law of detachment is what we're going to talk about first. And in the law of detachment, you have an if-then statement. Okay, if P then Q. Then you make a second statement that references the hypothesis, the P. Then you have a third statement that references the conclusion, which is the Q. Okay? Um, so if P then Q, if that's true, and then if P is true, then Q will be true. There's one up here as an example of that. If John is late making his car insurance payment, he will be assessed late payment. So this is my if P. And my Q. Then a second statement says John's payment is late. That references the hypothesis. And then it concludes that he will be assessed a late fee, which is the Q. So it does an if then statement, and then it makes a statement that, that addresses the if, and then another statement that addresses the end, the then in that order. Okay? Here's another one. If a car is out of gas, then it will not start. Sarah's car is out of gas, Sarah's car will not start. That is the law of detachment. Okay? Here's an if-then statement. If a car is out of gas, then it will not start. Okay? Here's another one. If a car is out of gas, then it will not start. Sarah's car is out of gas, Sarah's car will not start. When you talk about the law of detachment, a lot of times you have to say, does it make sense? Does this make sense? The car is out of gas, so it won't start. If Sarah's car is out of gas, it's not going to start, right? That makes sense. Yes. Kind of, yes. Uh-huh. Kind of. Now, let's flip-flop these two statements. Okay, I'm going to make it invalid by flip-flopping these two. Let's say that I'm going to cross these two out. Okay, and so then my second statement would be uh, Sarah's car will not start. be an invalid statement, okay? Because you have your if P and Q. If the car is out of gas, then it will not start. This references the conclusion and tries to prove the hypothesis. Just because Sarah's car won't start doesn't mean that it's out of gas. What else could be wrong with it? It could be the battery, spark plug, it could be a lot of different things, okay? So you cannot use the conclusion to prove the hypothesis. It has to go if P, then Q, and then you kind of personalize it, if P, then Q, okay? So you kind of go in that order. All right. Here is um, another example. If a ray is an angle bisector, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. BD bisects angle ABC. ABD is congruent to CBD. Is that valid? Yes, because you have an if P, then Q statement, right? If a ray is an angle bisector, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. 
And it specifically says that you have a ray that bisects an angle. So that references the heat. Then you conclude that it has two congruent angles. ABD is congruent to CBD. So this is valid by the law of detachment. Okay, here's another one. If Susie goes to the beach, she will wear sunscreen. Susie wears sunscreen, Susie is at the beach. Is that valid or invalid? Invalid. That's invalid. Why is that invalid? She could be at the pool. Okay, she could be at the pool, right? So Susie could be at the pool. She could be at an amusement park. She could be on the golf course. There's a lot of places that she could be, okay? And do you notice that the second statement references the conclusion to prove the hypothesis? And so you can't, you can't do that. Um, to Nate. So what would what law would this be? Is the 
Okay, here's another one. If you like musicals, then you enjoy theater productions. If you're an actor, then you enjoy theater productions. Could you make a, a, a third statement? No. No, it's a problem. No valid conclusion. That does not follow the law of detachment or the law of syllogism. It's just two random statements. Okay. Determine whether statement three follows from statement one and two by the law of detachment or the law of syllogism. If it does, state which law was used. If it does not, write invalid. Vertical angles are congruent. If two angles are congruent, then their measures are equal. If two angles are vertical, then their measures are equal. Is that valid or invalid? It's valid. By what? The law of syllogism. Okay, yeah, this first statement is not in if then form, but could I write it in if then form? If two angles are vertical, then they are congruent, right? Okay, so that's like if P and Q. Then it says if two angles are congruent, which references my Q, then their measures are equal, which is a new statement, right? And so then the third one takes the hypothesis of the first one, if two angles are vertical, and marries it up to the third, um, then their measures are equal. So that's the that's like the happy cow thing. Law of syllogism. Good cheese comes from happy cow. Happy cow comes from California. Good cheese comes from California. Okay, last one. If a figure is a square, then it is a polygon. ABCD is a polygon. ABCD is a square. Is that valid or invalid? Invalid. Why is that? What? It doesn't have to be a square. What else could it be? A trapezoid, a rectangle, a kite, a rhombus. It could be anything. They're trying to use the law of detachment, but what did they do wrong? What would make this valid? Yes. Yes, if you split, uh, split, if you flip two and three and put A, B, C, D as a square, A, B, C, D as a polygon, then it would work, okay? They're trying to use the, um, the conclusion to prove the hypothesis, and you can't do that, okay? can't do that. All right, so we talked about the difference between um, inductive and deductive. What was inductive? How do we know that it's inductive? It's not necessarily a match, it's based on assumptions by looking at a pattern of things, right? A series of things that are happening. Your deductive uses rules and theories. Now, inductive and deductive reasoning is used in the court of law all the time. It's used by um, CSI people, it's used by investigators, okay? Because what they have to do is they have to look at a pattern of events and they come up with what they think is true, some kind of conjecture. And then they use the deductive reasoning to help prove it, the rules and the laws, the facts, the tests, and all those kinds of things. So they kind of work together, but sometimes you have to start out with one and then work your way onto the other. Okay? All right. Your assignment is on page 121. Uh, disregard doing the Venn diagram. Do the problems they ask you to do, but you don't have to write a Venn diagram. Okay?